In the previous lesson, I mentioned that the database contains data of specific types. The result set object that's returned to you has a couple of methods for each of these data types. As I've already discussed, to retrieve data, you first move the cursor to the row containing the data you want. To access an individual data item from that row, you can either specify its column index or its name. You recall that when a table was constructed, each column was assigned both a position, an index, and a name. One of the data types that you can store in a database is an array. You can use this method to return it as an array object. Remember that the index values are one-based, so the first column is one, not zero. If you prefer, you can use the column name. Both these methods do the same thing. They return an array object. Now, this is a special SQL array object. Among a couple of other things, it has a getResult method that you can use to create result set object that will allow you to move the cursor through the array and retrieve the values found in it. You can get the details you need by looking up the array in the API document. Starting over. You can get the details you need by looking up array in the API documentation. You can return the data in its ASCII form. The input stream object can be read to retrieve an ASCII form of the data. Many relational databases store all their internal data, no matter what the type, as a string, and these methods simply return that string. Some, but not all, databases and not all data types work this way, but for those that don't, this method will convert the thing into ASCII for you. This is getting into database design, and I'm going to stick with the Java side of things. This will return the value of a big decimal object. A big decimal object is a specific numeric type that can contain large numbers of digits. This class is defined in the math package of the Java API. This will return the raw data, unmodified, right out of the database. The bytes from the database are not interpreted in any way. They're just returned to you as though they were an input stream. In relational database talk, a blob is a block of data of arbitrary size and is not interpreted in any way. This is what you do if you need to store audio files or images or some other kind of raw data in the database. Some use this data type to store encrypted information. A blob object is a Java object that contains blob data and provides access to it. This is an easy one. It returns the Java keyword true or false. These methods return the value as an 8-bit signed integer, or you can return a value as an array of bytes. Now you can't just return any value as any type. Some of them don't match and won't convert. Any of these methods will throw an SQL exception if some sort of error occurs and the information can't be returned. These methods allow you to read the data item as a stream of characters. Now this is not the same as reading the ASCII stream earlier because the ASCII data is returned as 8-bit bytes and the characters are returned as 16-bit Unicode characters and they're not the same. A CLOB is an SQL type. This stands for Character Large Object. The returned CLOB object contains a pointer to the actual data, not the data itself. It's a large unformatted text document made up of ASCII characters and or Unicode characters. A CLOB is a specialized form of a blob. These methods retrieve data and time information. If the calendar object is included, it's used to provide such things as millisecond data and time zone information because some databases don't store that with their data types. You can do the same thing with a time object and you can do the same thing with a time stamp object. Now these methods return values as real numbers. A double is a 64-bit real number and a float is a 32-bit real number. These methods return the values as integers. A short is 16 bits, an int 32 bits, and a long is 64 bits. The database value is returned here as a Java object. The type of object depends on the type of data. If the value is an SQL null, the return is a Java null. 
A map object can be used to map the database value types to Java object types. If you don't supply the map, a call is made to the getTypeMap method of the connection object that you created earlier. These methods return a Java object that is an implementation of an SQL ref, which is a reference to an SQL structured type in the database. An SQL ref object simply contains the information necessary to be a logical pointer to the real value which is in the database. These methods return the value as a Java string object, and these methods convert the data item in the database to a URL object and return it. These get methods have update methods that you can use to send data in the other direction. For example, there are a pair of get string methods that you can use to read from the result set, and there are a pair of update string methods that you can use to write to the result set. And this can be sent to the database. I'll be showing you an example of that coming up.